Some folks were to say, preach the good word of Messi, how Messi would be the greatest soccer player, the greatest football player of all time. Others, no, 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 hell no. Even though Messi won the cup, doesn't matter, Ronaldo is the better player. And other folks like my dad would say, nah, it is Pele. Pele is the greatest soccer player. He is the greatest footballer of all time. Who is the greatest NBA player? I preach the word of Michael Jordan, the greatest by far, the greatest NBA player to ever grace the court. But some folks do preach the good word of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Others would say Kobe Bryant. Others would say LeBron James. So whether it is Kareem or Ronaldo, whether it is Michael or Pele, one thing doesn't change. They all are vying for the title of GOAT. The GOAT! The greatest of all time. And in One Piece, we do have something relatively similar in the sense of the swordsman of One Piece. At this current point in time, Mihawk is the world's greatest swordsman. Currently, as a member of the Cross Guild, and of course, has a bounty of around 3.5 billion berries. A man who has even confirmed greater sword skill than the red hair wonder himself, Shanks, and the person that Ronor Zoro, the first man of the Strat crew, wishes to defeat to achieve his dream to become himself the world's greatest swordsman. However, when you take into account the history of the World One Piece, there is somebody who is just as good, if not better, in the pecking order of swordsmen and swordsmanship. And that is the sword god, G-O-D, goat god, Ryoma. Ryoma, who was such a legendary figure that Zoro himself gave up metal shubu sui to attain Enma because the folks of Wano country revered the blade of the sword god that much. One of the first people we know of in One Piece history to achieve a black blade, known as the legendary dragon slayer that we see in the Wanted story and in the 103 Dragon Damnation anime episode, and himself is a Shimotsuki, the progenitor of many of the sword techniques that Zoro himself uses today. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty PB&Js, because I did do a few polls on both Twitter and on YouTube asking folks' takes on this topic, because this is absolutely a very spicy topic. We do have to give a brief word for today's sponsor. This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Phishing attempts, cyber attacks, all the nasty hoo-ha malware and viruses that are out there in the World Wide Web, you need protection in your day to day life make sure that when you venture to these insane spots on the web you are secure and i know my anime manga faithful we go to some crazy gnarly spots on the web to each their own but you do need a shield when you venture off into these dangerous parts of the woods and let surfshark vpn be that shield. Not only does it have anti-malware, anti-virus features, but also it does have IP changing functionalities where in which wherever you are, no one will know who you are. So Surfshark VPN can clean all that nasty stuff that is gonna try and harm your device. And it doesn't matter which device it is, whether it's Windows, whether it's Macintosh or Linux, whether it's on your desktop, laptop, phone, iPad, you name it, Surfshark VPN has you covered on all your devices and it's available in so many different countries across the entire world. And one of the things I do absolutely hate is region gating. And I love how Surfshark VPN can circumnavigate region gating with the region change feature. So there are certain shows, animes, movies that I wanna check out that let's say normally I can't on Netflix, on Hulu, you name it. Well, I can easily change my region and then voila, I can gain access to that material, to those shows that normally I couldn't gain access to. So if you like what you hear, and you absolutely should, then check out Surfshark VPN, link in the box below, or scan this QR code right here. You use code COLE, that is K-O-L, to get an exclusive deal and four months free. Once again, use code COLE, QR code, or link in the box below to get that deal. So, lads and ladies, on that note, let us get back to the video content at hand. Ryoma, Mihawk, or equal? I did throw it in there. So here are the polls went. Over on Twitter, almost 1,800 votes. We have Ryoma at 37%. We have Mihoku at 49%. And we have equal at 12%. On YouTube, with a larger sample size of over, currently at this point in time, of over 6,000 votes, Mihawk is skewing more favorably at 57%, 31% say 
Rioma, but roughly still 12% on YouTube for equal. So, some comments and thoughts. Saddle up, see biscuit. Putting Mihawk over Rioma before we even see anything from Mihawk is crazy for people to do. I would say Mihawk because he's in an era of the best of the best in terms of opponents, different abilities, and the general turmoil in the world. I've seen enough of Wano to know Samurais have been outrageously overhyped. Did I miss something? Why is Mihawk being glazed so hard recently? Ryoma was known for slaying a dragon, so that suggests that's the biggest thing he did. Still a big accomplishment, but Mihawk would disassemble it with a butter knife. Ryoma for me is the greatest swordsman ever. He is portrayed similarly to Joy Boy as the greatest of the past. I don't see Mihawk beating Shanks slash Roger, especially how he reacted to Buggy and Crocodile about taking on the Yonkos. I do see Ryoma beating Shanks slash Roger. Mihawk equals Shirano. The <laughs> the dude that Ryoma beat in the wanted one shot and the anime special with relative ease. Mihawk turned supreme grade black. Ryoma didn't. In One Piece world, the next gen is always stronger. Mihawk rank is unreal. Mihawk is stronger. This is crazy. So let's shift over to YouTube. Though so honestly, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Right here, Ryoma, God of the Blade. Cavendish victims, both of them. Interesting. Ryoma is literally mentioned alongside Joy Boy. I choose Mihawk, but it's a huge possibility that they might be equal. Our battle will be legendary, quoting Tai Lung from Kung Fu Panda 1. It's Vista. Uh-oh. Mihawk all day, every day. I'm going with the guy who has a Supreme Grade Blade Forge Black and is waiting for someone even stronger than Red Hair Shanks to step up and fight him. The same Red Hair Shanks that even Kaido respects immensely. Do people not find it crazy that Mihawk, even among legends like Roger and Whitebeard Cheeky and others, is the only person to forge a black blade? That's how special he is. There is just no way to scale Ryoma accurately. He can go from at least stronger than Oden all the way up to Joy Boy level since he is a mythical figure. And if I am going with the Ryoma is saw in the one shot Oda did, he doesn't move me enough. So basically, Ryoma cutting the dragon at the end of the one shot nor near enough impressive feet compared to let's see what Mihawk has done in the actual movie story. Then we have things like Ry <laughs> Ryoma would not run from Vista. And finally, Jesus. I'm the one, you moron. I am the son of God. I was sent down by my father to lead his flock to paradise, to atone for the sins of Adam and Eve in the garden. So look. Here's my stance on this, because I read a lot of different comments, a lot of different takes on this, and you can see how even though when it comes to the vote tally, Mihawk is definitely favorable. The comments are going back and forth, tug of war style that you'd see in Squid Game. Here's what I could tell about the GOAT conversation about the Great Swords in One Piece. There are two things for Mihawk, and one... Actually, I'm going to slide in two. There are two things for both characters that you could argue would put them in the category of the GOAT, of the greatest swordsman of all time. So first, let's get to Dracul, Dracul Mihoku. Number one, Mihawk does wield a supreme grade blade in Yoru, whereas Ryoma wielded a great grade blade in Meito Shusui. Now they're both black blades, this is true, but one is a superior quality blade than the other blade. Now there are many cases in the story where the quality of the blade doesn't necessarily matter. What matters is the wielder themselves and how skilled they are with the blade. Zoro lost to Mihawk with a butter knife, essentially. Even though during that fight, Zoro was wielding Waruichi Monji, a great grade blade, a sword that he's been using for most of his life. So clearly, the blade quality didn't matter there because simply put, in terms of swordsmanship, sword skill, sword play, hockey, and so on, he was not on Mihawk's level. So would it make a difference in that fight if Warichimonji was a supreme grade blade on the same level as Ace? No. Nope. It was recently revealed in SBS number 109 that Fujitora has also a supreme grade blade. That doesn't mean that he's on Gold D Rogers level. But in the grand scheme of things, when the margins are tight, you could argue the quality of the blade does matter. And with Ryoma and Mihawk, you would argue, let's say in a hypothetical 1v1 fight, the margins would be tight, pretty damn tight. Because of Mihawk's quality of blade, he would edge out someone like Ryoma. In 2021, when Kevin Durant was playing for the Brooklyn Nets, if his shoe size was a little bit smaller, that clutch shot would have been a game-winning shot instead of a game-tying shot. 
Oh, inches, centimeters do matter. And with this supreme grade blade versus a gray gray blade, ideally that would matter on paper. Especially when we assume that it was Mihawk that did change into a black blade. In the Road to Laughter, I think in a certain translation, they do say that. But keep in mind that in terms of durability, black blades are known for how tough and how durable they are. Zoro literally said that Shusui could have a dinosaur step on it and it wouldn't bend, one iota. So in terms of the quality of the sword, Mihawk does edge out Ryoma, one. Two is that in terms of the generational bit, the idea like you see in many different, let's say stories and shonen is that current generation is outdoing the past generation. That's how things tend to be. Uh, the clear example here would let's say be Luffy, where Luffy is going to succeed where Goldie Roger ultimately failed. Now the semantics of that are the semantics, but the end result is that Luffy will get the ultimate trophy in the story, whereas Goldie Roger was really, 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 really close. I mean, he got the last tail, but there were still things that were lacking for his ultimate, ultimate dream. Mihawk, because he is a next gen console, PS5 to NES, the whole point is that Mihawk, he would have the better specs, he would have the better understanding of swordsmanship, but also the course of time, these things would improve. So that is like the two main stances I see when it comes to Mihawk over Ryoma. Now, Ryoma over Mihawk, there are two things here too. One of them is very, 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 very clear. Legacy. It's, it's a legacy. The idea of being the world's greatest swordsman for the current era is nice and all. But when you have the sword god title, that title feels way more all-encompassing for all eras. Like, whether it's going to be the current era, hundreds before that, or before that, or before that, or let's even the swordsman of the void century era 800 or 900 years ago predating ryoma ryoma 400 years ago would be better than all of these swordsmen one of the things that you kind of see is mihawk right now does live in a pretty chaotic time a pretty chaotic world but mihawk is a character that actively tries to avoid a lot of that chaos he is someone that wants to be by himself and ultimately just netflix and chill that's mihawk essentially and he even reiterates that when he talks to crocodile by making buggy the lead man for the cross guild we don't necessarily know how things were globally in the world of one piece 400 years ago but it is stated that wano country was a land of gold and ryoma was fending off against invaders, a lot of them being world government affiliates. How many people this day and age talk very highly of the elders? How powerful are the elders compared to, let's say, admirals, emperors, right? That, that's been a big question as of late. Was Ryoma in the past 400 years ago dealing with a Marcus Mars, dealing with a Top Man Warkery? The theory would be that back in the day, Ethan would have been among that ilk too. Oh, yeah. So was Ryoma the lead man of a Wano country uh, samurai force, or was he the standalone dude? The margins extremely lopsided, like the Spartans versus the Persians. Think of that Luffy picture where you see Luffy staring at all the five elders. W was that Ryoma? Was Ryoma going 1v5 and actually defending Wano against all the elders? Did Emu? Whoa. What? <laughs> the legacy of Ryoma is not just him taking down the dragon. That's for sure. The legacy is, yeah, listen, he was defending the lands of Wano from the WG, from other pirates that wanted the gold, the treasures, the riches of Wano. Where does that go now? No idea. But when Ryoma was there, as far as we know, they weren't getting it. Likely that and Pluton, they were not getting it not on his watch. This is powerful legacy, man. It, it is. Because there's so much potential to power creep his legacy ad infinitum until Oda actually draws us what exactly was going on at that point in time in Wano Country and who Ryoma was dealing with. Who's to say back in that point in time, 400 years ago, there weren't holy knights just as good as the holy knights now was ryoma dealing with these cats <laughs> ryoma's legacy is going to be in part in lockstep with the power level of the world government because these guys among the other forces at that point in time tried to come into one country and they were repelled by ryoma and other people that's these stuff there like ryoma and other samurai forces that's tough legacy but then number two 
And this one I didn't see that much, if, if at all, actually. Number two is Ryoma's connection with Zoro. We now know that Zoro uses the same swordsmanship style as Ushimaru. And that is a part of the Shimotsuki legacy that Ryoma, he was the pinnacle or the founder, the progenitor of this stuff. Again, Zoro was trained and raised up in Shimotsuki village in the East Blue. So the foundation of the vast majority of his techniques have its bedrock in Ryoma's techniques. And this may even apply to things like Ashra. Ashra is something that we don't have a full explanation of just yet in the story, but what if even Ashra has its roots in Ryoma's technique. So Ryoma had his own version of Atra way back when that he used at times to fend off particularly tough opponents that are trying to come into Wano country. You can see it, let's say, in a similar vein to the Uchiha clan Susanos. And when you think about it, Ryoma could be essentially peak Zoro. What Zoro is bound to be could be Ryoma, thereby becoming the next sword god. Just how in some sense, Luffy is bound to be in some way Joy Boy, right? At, at that level, where he's at that sword god level, that's he overcomes Mihawk. So those are the cases I would say for Ryoma is over Mihawk, and then Mihawk is over Ryoma. Yeah, in terms of the feats, you only have Ryoma taking down a dragon. That's like, bruh. In terms of say what we actually see, it could be the case where let's say for example, the World Government guys only sent goons, or only goons after Ryoma. I mean, it's like, what? Goons? No, 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 no. The, hoo-hoo! If that's the case here, then Ryoma's legacy is overblown. Goons? Nah. No heavy hitters, no elders, no, no holy knights, no? Just random CP agents, goons like that? That's, that's, that's not gonna cut it. It's not, no pun intended. It's not gonna cut it for Ryoma's legacy, and the legacy is clearly overinflated at the same time though how many times did i see uh vista vista v vista um yeah vista right vista's gonna take care of this <sighs> how many times did you see people refer to mihawk in uh not so pleasant lights he was shaking a little bit when buggy said what he said mihawk for sure obviously clearly has way better feats than Ryoma. In fact, he has a whole companion of feats that we see in Marine Ford. The problem, of course, though, is a lot of the Mihawk hardcore stands always wind up buying their tail on this because these feats are either useful and they mean something, or they're straight up trash because we haven't seen, quote unquote, we haven't seen Mihawk do anything, end quote. It's like, what? what? We've seen him do a lot, but at the same time, he's done nothing. So even though he has more feats than Ryoma, does that really matter if these feats are quote unquote nothing? It's a very strange Ouroboros situation when it comes to the fandom's perceptions of Mihawk's feats. A lot of them downplay what Mihawk actually did in Marine 4, where he, where he did some gnarly things, and they're dope as hell things. And then also at the same time too, the Ryoma cats, no offense, but he's not Joy Boy. I understand that Ryoma has a lot of lore to his character for sure, and he has the sauce, he, he doesn't have Joy Boy songs. It's not even close. Like, you don't see any ancient mythical creatures like Zunisha or or Ameth, this giant, huge robot that could have flown to the red line speaking the name Ryoma. Ryoma. It's not happening. It's, it's not. It's not. You have one transforming fox that talked about him on a bridge. Some Benki guy, Onimaru the fox in front of Zoro. That, that's really it because his sword was in vicinity. Like the Sea Kings aren't talking about Ryoma, they're talking about like Shirahoshi, Joy Boy, like ancient, ancient, a uh, Roger, like crazy dudes like that, all right? Ah, uh, so it cuts, again, no pun intended, it cuts both ways here. And for me personally, if I voted, I'll click on equal. In the past, I actually did lean Mihawk over Ryoma, I did. However, when I start to realize the possibility of Ryoma being the real progenitor for Zoro's skills. So even though he doesn't have three swords, he could still have every technique that Zoro has and even further beyond that. And would even have, let's say, three sword style of his own via, let's say, potentially his own Astra. That is a crazy possibility for things Ryoma could do. And it falls easily within this paradigm of character. It kind of became more murky to me because it could be the case here where Ryoma's sword skills do outshine. They are better than Mihawk's, even though Mihawk has the superior grade blade. So we will see, we shall see. But let me know your stance on the topic matter at hand. 
be sure to rate the video, comment, subscribe, make sure to click on the bell to join the notification squad and go to your YouTube app on your phone and turn on that feature to actually get notifications for your subscriptions. So until the next time, I'm gonna see you guys and gals on the flip side. See you, bye bye.